My mother-in-law, 55F lives with me, 30F, my husband, 29M, and our three kids, SS7, my daughter, 6, and our daughter, 1. Some info, his mom is around, but he only sees her maybe two days a month. All the kids' needs and wants comes out of my paycheck. The issue is my MIL has what I consider an unhealthy attachment to my SS. She's to the point where she's obsessed with him. He can do nothing wrong in her eyes. He sleeps in bed with every night, even though he definitely has his own bed. If I tell him to do something he doesn't want to do or she doesn't think he should do, she either does it for him or throws a fit saying he shouldn't have to. The breaking point was last night when I told the kids to go to bed and specified they needed to go get in their own bed. My SS went and got in my MIL bed. I told him he needed to go get in his bed. He threw a fit saying she said he could, and she's screaming saying that he always sleeps with her. I ended up winning that argument but then I hear her talking to my husband saying, he's only slept in his bed one night this summer, he always sleeps with me. Then I made the comment that he's going to sleep in his bed every night once school starts and she laughs and goes, no he's not. I was so angry at that point I just walked away. Then I hear him in his bedroom saying that when I go to bed she'll come get him. He said that I'm going to get mad and she goes, I don't care. At that point I told my husband I'm not parenting him anymore. I'll still help with him but I'm not parenting. She can pay for and bring him to all his extracurriculars, she can get him up and bring him to school, she can buy all his school clothes and supplies. If he wants to stay up till 5M, so be it. If he wants to eat nothing but microwave ramen, I'm done fighting it. My husband told me that SS is going to be the one to end up suffering for it, and I responded with telling him that I can't take the constant walking on eggshells in my house and the stress, so I'm washing my hands of this. So am I the asshole for saying I'm not parenting my SS? Story 2 My son recently graduated high school and while I am immensely proud of him, he is also very grounded. He thought it would be a funny prank to draw dicks and beards on his sisters 16 and 14 while they slept with a black skin dye which has been held to get out. His sisters are beyond furious, and I've never seen my wife so angry. He is in deep shit and has lost all privileges including his prom and grad party, though he did attend his ceremony and we had a nice dinner. I knew my mom planned on getting him a car, he drives an older car in my wife's name, and I was fine with it, but I thought she understood not right now. Well my mom showed up the other morning with his graduation gift and guess what it was, the fucking $80,000 in car he didn't need to begin with and certainly doesn't deserve right now. My wife was pissed and it was a slap in the face to my daughters. I asked her what she was doing and she said it was still his graduation. Then she told me we were mean for making him miss prom and his grad party as they are once in a lifetime events. My son was standing there beaming and I just felt so bad for my daughters. I asked her to take the car back and she said no it was his. She said what he did doesn't change that he worked hard and we should be proud. My wife was ready to lose it, so I told my mom to get off our property and that she is banned from our house for disrespecting my parenting. She isn't even going to be invited for his going away dinner in August before he leaves for college. Obviously my mom and son are pissed. Story 3 I found out earlier this month our daughter had sex. I was floored and left speechless. She is 16 though, and of course not unheard of. Honestly it came out of left field, and we were dealing with some other issues regarding her. My husband is what I'll call high strung. He overreacts a lot when it comes to things. I waited three weeks and finally told him. He is livid. He sees me not telling him immediately as a breach of trust etc. I tried to explain that I kept it from him because we already were dealing with issues and I myself needed to digest everything. He called me neglectful for not getting her to the doctor as soon as I found out. She is on birth control and I had verified she has had multiple periods. As the encounter happened three months ago, I told him I wasn't going to make an app without telling him to begin with. 
This went down last Sunday. We both talked her on Tuesday and went through the situation. He handled it okay. He ignored my birthday Wednesday. Won't touch me, barely talks to me. Ate for not telling him as soon as I found out? Story 4. So I, 27F, have a younger brother, Mike, 21M. He is the definition of a man-child and a mama's boy, always complaining, always expecting others to bow to him. Just, overall, an asshole. Ever since he was born, my parents fussed over him for everything. He's not special needs, or had a traumatic birth or anything of the sort. He was just born. And my parents completely discarded me. My mom, 50F especially. She went from a loving mother to one of those boy moms that people make fun of on the internet. My father, 50M still showed me love and support, but he's always been too much of a coward to stand up to my mother and let me win at least once. The only one who stood for me was my grandpa, 76M, who always called my parents out on their bullshit and never liked my brother. I remind him of his late wife, my grandma, and we have a very special bond, but he lives on the other side of the country, and I could never see him often. Mike knows our mom, prefers him, and loves to shove it in my face. Because of this and his behavior, we've always been at odds. He's spoiled, a brat, and an awful human. I can't remember how many times I ended up in trouble for things I did better than him or for things he framed me with. His only talent are his football skills. He won a scholarship to a nice college out of state. My parents didn't spend a dime on my education because apparently my fund had been used to cover expenses after a fire, just for me to discover years later that said money were given to Mike to buy a car and a house. It's at public university that I met Lucas. He was the first person I was really drawn to there. Of course I met new people who are now my dearest friends and thanks to them and Lucas who was my best friend for years before we got together, I managed to move out of my parents' house. Now both Lucas and I are well known in our fields and have very good salaries. Now, to the main issue. Lucas proposed to me a year ago. We're very private people, so we didn't post it on social media or anything, and when I told my parents they dismissed it with a that's nice. I'm starting to think they downright didn't listen to me at all. We decided that we wanted a nice but simple ceremony and reception with our friends and relatives. Lucas convinced me to invite my parents and brother, but they never responded to the invite. And whenever I went to visit and began to talk about my wedding, without mentioning it was a wedding, my mom would always speak over me and about my brother's accomplishments and wild adventures. At one point I got fed up with it and interrupted my mom to tell her that there was an event I was planning to organize, whose date was unmovable. She told me that they couldn't attend because my brother was playing the last game of the season that very same day and wanted them to be there. Of course, this favoritism didn't surprise me. They missed my ballets, shows in both my high school and university graduation for things about him. At this point, I wanted to be petty. I told both my parents that it wasn't a problem to miss this event, purposely omitted the fact that this event was my wedding, and didn't insist further. Flash forward to a few weeks ago, I got married. It was perfect. My family, Lucas' family and our friends were all there, and we had a blast. My grandpa was happy to give me away and it was just perfect. My relatives asked me multiple times why my parents weren't there with us. I was honest and simply said they had my brother's game to attend and couldn't come. They gave me a few looks and my grandpa was visibly angry for a while, but otherwise nothing strange happened. After the reception, Lucas and I left for our honeymoon and were phone free for the whole duration of the trip. But once we got back, we discovered that a shitstorm was welcoming us home. I turned my phone on and was unable to even unlock it before a storm of notifications popped up. Most of them were from my mother and brother. Mike called me all sorts of nasty names and insulted me because apparently, one of my paternal aunts posted the photos of the wedding on Facebook and captioned it with a very obvious dig at my parents, especially my mom, for missing the wedding. The post apparently went viral in my parents' community, and they've been publicly shamed for their mistreatment of me. 
It also turns out that my grandpa personally visited my parents to go on a tirade to shame my father, his son, to the point of tears. And this seemed to be my father's breaking point, because he was so distraught for missing his only daughter's wedding and for his father's disapproval, that he finally rebelled against my mom and is threatening divorce unless she makes it up to me. I think that's the reason why my mom has been spamming my phone with messages, at first insulting and threatening, and then downright pitiful, full, of begging and pity parties. Now I'm at home with my husband, deciding how to approach the situation. Most of my relatives, even those I didn't invite to the wedding, reached out to apologize for what I went through and to claim they had no idea this was happening at home, can't blame any of my relatives, they all live with my grandpa on the other side of the country or in another state, but my mom's sisters and friends are belittling me for not telling my mom about the wedding, because now she's inconsolable at the thought of having missed my wedding. Personally I think she just claims that to save face, but I'm not sure. The latest messages from my father and mother seem extremely saddened and hurt for missing my wedding. Now my family is divided on three fronts, the majority who is sticking by my side, my maternal aunts shaming me for hurting my mom's feelings, and my maternal grandparents who are adamant that I forgive my mom in light of her atonement. My best friends are telling me not to listen to them. Edit, thank you so much for the feedback and love. It's overwhelming. I'm going to address the popular questions here. 1. I did inform my parents about my wedding. I sent traditional on-paper invites to all my guests. I was notified that all invites had reached their addresses. I did not receive any answer from my parents and Mike, a few very distant relatives, and some people on Luca's side. I did reach out to all of them through message to double-check, and those who hadn't replied told me they couldn't come. I asked my parents and brother via text, but they didn't respond. I was left on read. Knowing them and given all the things I had to plan, I didn't bother insisting. 2. I didn't repeat the date of my wedding because I had already been told there was my brother's gain. Plus, every time I insisted on highlighting my celebrations to get an answer, I was always told that it wasn't that important and to not be pissy and a bother. Because some things were simply more important than me. At this point I think it's fair for me to not insist anymore. It's not worth the effort. 3. I didn't keep my wedding a secret. I avoided telling my parents that it was my wedding to see if they would be interested in the slightest, but surprise surprise they weren't. Despite this, I did openly talk about my wedding with my aunts and uncles. My mother was in the room with us a few times when I discussed venues or dress shops with my aunt, the FB Post one, but sometimes mom was on the phone, and other times she was just chatting with other people. She never paid attention. When I talked about it during reunions, she smiled and said, that's great dear, and then would change the subject. Radio silence on dad and Mike. 4. I kept in contact with them because, well, all the times I tried to go and see in the past years I'd been harassed. I tried after my HS, bachelor's and master's graduations, to which they never bothered to show up for reasons involving my brother. Every time I was shamed for daring to turn my back on family by my parents, my brother, my maternal aunts, and my maternal grandparents. I think the turning point here is that, all those times, Lucas wasn't by my side, we started dating a little after my last attempt at going and see, and how that I have him here, I feel more confident in my stance. But before that, I want this confident. As I already stated, all my paternal side lives on the other side of the country, and wasn't aware of how they treated me, I did try to expose my parents once at 14. My aunts, uncles and grandpa reprimanded them, they faked being sorry, and then once home I got the beating and gaslighting of my life for lying. After that, I will kept in contact regularly with my paternal side, but omitting my parents' abuse out of fear, which TBH still haunts me to this day. Only grandpa knew but he was always threatened to be alienated from me if he tried anything. 5. My parents and I are not from the same city. I live in a city an hour drive from my parents' small town, and they don't know my new address because once, my brother tried to break in my apartment to steal some cash and my mother backed him up, claiming that siblings share their goods. Now I moved, 
and I'll be sure not to tell them where I live. 6. My parents didn't buy my brother a car and a house before he even started high school. They bought him a car for his 16th birthday, and a house near his college when he began freshman year. They didn't spend the money of my fund right away, they just lied to me to use it later for my brother, keeping it stored for later in the meantime. 